today we're going to be talking about trigonometry for real and also reciprocal trig functions. So, as we established in the previous video, sine theta equaled y, cosine theta was x, and tangent theta was y over x, which is also sine theta over cosine theta, right? Because if you plug this into here and you plug this into here, you get sine theta over cosine theta. Okay, now onwards to the reciprocal functions. So, if we have the SOHCAHTOA thing, sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse, right? Cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent theta is opposite over adjacent. Okay, so the reciprocal of sine theta Okay, you know what reciprocal is, right? You just flip it, right? So sine theta, the reciprocal is cosecant theta. And that would just be hypotenuse over opposite. The reciprocal of cosine theta is secant theta. And you just flip it again. And the reciprocal of tangent theta is cotangent theta. And again, you just flip it. So as you can see, you just put the numerator into the denominator's place, and you put the denominator into the numerator's place. Okay, so... You can rewrite that too, like cosecant theta is 1 over y, right? And then secant theta is 1 over x, and cotangent theta is just x over y. Okay, so if I had a unit circle, I'm just going to quickly draw one, and let's just choose a random angle, pi over 3. So if I had pi over 3, right? The coordinates of this are square root 3 over 2 is the y and half is the x because square root 3 over 2 is longer than half, right? So we have half square root 3 over 2. This is the x and this is the y. So the sine of pi over 3 would just be sine is y, right? So it would just be this, square root 3 over 2. Now, cosecant of pi over 3 is... 1 over y, so 1 over square root 3 over 2. So basically, you're just flipping it. So it would just be 2 over square root 3. Now, they're going to try to trick you by asking you something weird like cotangent of pi. And that looks really innocent, right? But it's not, because pi is right here. So that means that it would be negative 1, 0. So how can you divide x, which is negative 1, over 0, which is y? You just can't do it. And that's the same thing as tan of pi over 2, right? Because pi over 2 is 0, 1, and you just can't do 1 over 0. These just don't make sense. So whenever they ask you for it, just write undefined, because that's what it is. It doesn't exist. There's no such thing. And as we see when we graph it, there's going to be asymptotes there, but we'll talk about that later. OK, so now I think we're ready for a great pickup line session. OK, so. If you need help picking up that girl in your math class or that guy like across the street or something, there's a really easy test to see if they're smart enough for you because I have faith in every single one of you to find some intelligent soulmate. And here's a really easy test. So you just go up th to them, right? And you just walk up to them and you're like, hey, you're so tan C over sine C. So let's see, tan C over sine C. Now if they're smart, they don't even have to write this up, they'll just think about it. So if we break it apart, tan c, what is that? That's y over x, right? So that would just be sine c over cosine c. And you're dividing it by sine c, which is the same thing as multiplying it by 1 over sine c. Now, sine c over sine c, that's just, it cancels out. So you're left with 1 over cosine c. And 1 over cosine c is secant c, right? But read that out loud. Sexy! <laughs> 